In the 2022 book, New Second Edition, The Gospel of Science, it collects 40 years of mind-body scientific research, which led to the creation of the Global Transformation Project, a simple, elegant plan for global transformation. Fear stress is what fuels over 8 trillion measured in US dollars per year of our planet's precious resources to be spent on rising healthcare spending and nearly 2 trillion in military spending worldwide each and every year, which is one of the world's major pollution and CO2 sources. There is a simple, elegant cure for this growing fear in the world. Ancient mind-body practices, yoga, meditation, qigong, mindfulness, and tai chi provide a science-based answer to our world's growing fear and division and to our economic woes. Does this cure sound too simple? Science proves that mind-body education is the solution to our global economic health and rising global depression, which feeds the growing fear in the world. The number of incident cases of major depressive disorder worldwide increased from 162 million in 1990 to 240 million in 2017, representing an increase of 49%. And this was before the pandemic. Lancet Journal reports anxiety and depression skyrocketed nearly 30% since then. Mind-body practices can provide the same antidepressant benefits as pharmaceuticals yet without negative side effects. However, mind-body does provide side effects, profoundly beneficial side effects to people and global health, which could save the world trillions in annual health costs. Dr. Herbert Benson of Harvard points out that between 60% to 90% of all illnesses sending people to doctors is caused by stress and best treated by mind-body practices. This was also supported by a 20-year Kaiser Permanente study which found that between 70 and 85% of the illnesses sending people to their doctors were caused by stress. By spreading mind-body education throughout the planet via public education, we could save trillions each year, year after year, in future health and social costs. This is the goal of the Global Transformation Project. We have created a United Nations resolution advocating science-based mind-body education for public education worldwide. There is a precedent for this. In 2014, the United Nations General Assembly passed a UN resolution proclaiming the International Day of Yoga, based on the same goals of advancing world health as our Global Transformation Project resolution. It passed with a record number of co-sponsoring nations, UN missions. 177 nations co-sponsored it. The Global Transformation Project's founders have a record of massive global impact, founding World Tai Chi Day in 1999, which today is held in over 80 nations and has been officially proclaimed or supported by over 22 United States governors, the National Congress of Brazil, the Senates of Puerto Rico, California, New York, the President of Croatia, the National Ministry of Bonaire, consulates of China, Italy, India, and government bodies and institutions all over the world. An excerpt from the new second edition, The Gospel of Science. What could the world do with trillions of extra dollars? Possibilities are profound. Estimates are that world hunger could be ended with just $30 billion a year. 3.4 million, mostly children, die annually from water-related diseases, according to the World Bank estimates. 150 billion each year would provide clean water worldwide. Wrapping our heads around this, that just a tiny fraction of the trillions saved in health costs could end world hunger and millions of water-related deaths is huge. Global transformation on a gargantuan scale. Global Transformation Project founders, decades of global mind-body organizing efforts revealed that mind-body teachers exist in virtually every city in every nation of the world. Public education can expand the use of these vastly underutilized resources on a massive scale. And this is only the beginning of what the Global Transformation Project offers the world. 
Global Transformation Project founders' efforts involved organizing mind-body practitioners, Tai Chi, Qigong, Yoga, and meditation around the planet to come together for a 24-hour period on the last Saturday of April for over 20 years. Princeton University's Pair Lab project, known as the Global Consciousness Project, provided data showing that this event had actually measurably increased coherence in global consciousness, not just for those participating, but for the whole of humanity. Transcendental meditation research with major universities and in conjunction with police statistics departments did a series of studies showing that if just 1% of a city's population was high-level meditators, it could dramatically reduce the violent crime rates for the entire city. And in one study of 48 cities, this effect remained for five years. The Princeton University Pair Lab Born Project showed that even far less than 1% of planet Earth's population could create greater coherence in planetary consciousness, not just for the World Tai Chi Day and the GTP founders organized. By ensuing events like the International Day of Yoga, World Peace Meditations, etc., had similar beneficial effects on the planetary consciousness. On the microcosmic scale, prisons and schools that have incorporated mind-body education have seen massive improvements in behavior, less violence and bullying. In fact, mind-body education expanding across the planet is already changing the world. Violent crime rates in the United States and many countries are at 40-year lows. Yes, you heard that right. 40-year lows in violent crime rates. Why does that sound unbelievable? because today's media is fear-based. Another excerpt from the new second edition, The Gospel of Science. In June 2011, a Psychology Today article entitled, If It Bleeds, It Leads, Understanding Fear-Based Media, spoke of how fear-invoking news stories feed on the anxieties of people and in effect hold us captive. This is something that needs to change when you consider that our health and our future has its seeds in the ether of our current state of mind. An October 2011 Associated Press article by Seth Bornstein titled, Surprisingly Enough, the World is a Safer Place, published in San Francisco Gate, points out that although media reports make us feel like the world is more violent, new data is saying that in fact our world is indeed much safer than any time in history. Albert Einstein had a question that said that he said was the most important question we could ask ourselves. Is the universe a friendly place? Well, the answer to that is increasingly yes, and it may reflect at least partly what is happening in the brains of millions of people worldwide who are literally rewiring their minds through meditative experiences, creating an ever-friendlier planet. End of quote. How does this affect the fear behind the planet's woes? Mind-body research shows that mind-body practices can actually physically shrink the stress-fear parts of the brain while increasing the size activity of the empathy and compassion parts of the brain. The TM and Princeton research shows this is not local to just those practicing mind-body practices. It has a planetary effect that reduces violence in the world. What would introducing hundreds of millions of new mind-body practitioners in the world do for the planet? The Princeton-born Global Consciousness Project founder, Dr. Roger Nelson, said that the most exciting finding of their 20 years of research was that when a, mind, a human mind is in a state of healing, compassion, and tension, and that mind connects with others around the world in that state of grace, it is a more powerful state, according to their data, than fear and tragedy states are. Mind-body education in public schools worldwide would increase the size of the empathy and compassion parts of hundreds of millions of students' brains. And when these students worldwide go into alpha-theta brainwave meditative states all around the planet for one hour each day, as the Global Transformation Project's UN Resolution advocates for public schools, Science shows the positive effects of this could be massive, beyond imagination. We are talking global transformation on a scale so vast, huge, and beautiful 
that our current mindsets can hardly even begin to imagine. But do public educators care enough about this vision of global transformation to adopt mind-body education as part of public education? No, but this is what they would be extremely interested in. Science shows it would be virtually insane not to adopt mind-body education for public education because the science reveals mind-body education will increase students' IQs, improve GRE reading scores, improve math proficiency skills, improve verbal fluency, reduce student absenteeism due to illness, improve student focus and test scores, reduce bullying and behavior problems, and reduce ADD or attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. No rational public educator would look at this science and not become extremely excited about mind-body education in public schools. Plus, science reveals that if teachers participate in mind-body education with students and on their own, it reduces teacher burnout. The science is in. Become a healing part of history. Visit www.globaltransformationproject.org where you can sign our petition to UN missions worldwide to pass the Science-Based Mind-Body Education for Public Education Resolution which we will be submitting to UN missions worldwide, backed by the sole force of tens of thousands of petition signers, which we will share with the UN missions when we approach them with this resolution. Once you sign the petition at globaltransformationproject.org, please do what you can to spread the word on this historic opportunity for planetary transformation. Also, if you are a scientist, health, or education expert, Please add your name to our growing list of science, health, education professionals backing our UN resolution campaign. The event's motto is, time to use science in public education. We have an opportunity to change the world forever in beneficial ways beyond comprehension. Alone, we can do so little. Together, so much. Helen Keller.
il ne peut y avoir de jardin. C'est pourquoi les plantes grandissent et se moquent de nos yeux qui ne voient que de loin.